Okay. Green economy. Is this just another fancy buzzword? Or is it a strong concept for change? And what about Norway in this context? But first, some facts. We are now consuming the biological capacity of 1.5 planets. If we are heading in the same direction, we will in 2050 consume 2.5 planets. We are, in fact, heading for a new global crisis, a resource crisis. Global crises provide an opportunity to consider traditional growth models, the financial crisis, the food crisis, and the now approaching resource crisis give global momentum for transition to a green economy. The dual goals of sustainability. On the one hand, high development, high human development, and on the other hand, low ecological impact. But how do we manage to ensure a socially just and fair development of human well-being and wealth for a fast-growing population, while at the same time ensure a low ecological impact and destruction on ecosystem services and nature? We must not forget that the basis for human development is the planet's natural resources. And the trends are indisputable. The pressure on the planet increases. Economy and ecology have to be seen as two components on the same footing. Based on this, there is an urgent need to restructure our economy. The main components in the green economy concepts are, first, efficient use of resources. And that's all kinds of resources, both renewables and non-renewables. Secondly, it's about low carbon energy, that we source the energy from the renewable sources. And thirdly, it's about human well-being and social equity. That's the three main pillars in green economy. Resource efficiency, low carbon energy, and human well-being and social equity. The working definition from UNEP is capturing this very well. And the core message is that natural capital and environmental costs are valued in, e in economic terms and integrated in economic models and decision-making. What about Norway in this context? Norway is in a unique position. We have got it all. We have access to all that is needed to be a front-runner in the development of a green economy. We are rich on natural resources. We have a high level of competence both within management resources, within the environment, within technology, etc. And we have developed strong industrial clusters, especially within offshore activities and maritime operations. At last but not least, we have access to long-term solid investment capital. All this gives Norway a unique possibility to build strong advantages and to develop a clear competitive edge as a green, value-creating nation in the future. And to be a role model and front-runner in this game. But sorry to say, our performance in this green economy game is up till now lousy. The report I'm referring to in this speech Green Economy in Norway, What is it and How to Do it? has just been published by WWF Norway 
and the employee organization ES. Egon Poiri has been professionally responsible for the report. And one of the main findings in the report is that Norway today has a yellow economy. It's for sure not green, and it's not red or brown, but it's something in between. And the main reasons for this are the following. The petroleum industry is dominating our industry, representing one-fifth of the total economy. The ecological footprint from our consumption is increasing, mainly because of higher CO2 intensity, but also because of waste, increasing waste. So is the pressure on the, our natural resource base. And last, there is no overall and comprehensive political plan for a gradual transition to a green, greener economy and a more ecological, sustainable and low emission society in Norway. There are many political initiatives but there is no overriding political vision or strategy for green economy in Norway. And Norway economy is in practice on a tra trajectory, making it increasingly less environmentally sustainable. We are heading to be a winner in the brown economy as the most efficient, the most cleanest fossil player. This is the this is the existing strategic and political mantra. What are then the barriers for restructuring the economy, no economy in Norway in the direction of a more environmentally sustainable economy? The report identified the following barriers. It's a major risk that innovation processes are being locked into a development track that is one-sidedly oriented towards the petroleum industry. The business clusters within offshore and maritime operations are self-strengthening. There are strong vested and powerful interests in existing economic structures. They have much to defend and they have power. The new players within innovative green business areas have much to prove. They are vulnerable and easy to track down. Lobbying for natural gas to Europe is more important than lobbying for hydropower as a balancing energy component in the European energy mix. It's also unclear who should bear the costs for the restructuring and changeover. It's difficult to attract investment to premature green solutions. At the same time, the profit is high and the risk is lower for investments in the petroleum industry. Another barrier is market failure. The CO2 fee or the quota pricing are not reflecting the full costs of the degradation of the environment or the effects on the climate. And lastly, there is a lack of a coordinated and holistic view on how to address major crossover issues as sustainability and environment. Sector-specific initiatives are dominating. The silos thinking is a driving force. The result is non-coordinated, non-collective approach. Even though Cabinet Minister Giske yesterday talks about shared responsibilities and broad consensus on political actions, the fact is that the socio-economists in the Ministry of Finance has both hands on the steering wheel and their perspective is not holistic and for sure not radical. How can we win over these barriers? And start a successful transition to a green economy in Norway and thus harvesting from the opportunities this represents in the long term. What could be the main strategic element in this kind of transition. Three points. We need to get in place long-term, predictable, enabling conditions for key industry areas. This includes subsidizing schemes for new green business areas, 
get rid of environment hostile subsidies for the petroleum industry, initiate a green tax shift from tax on human labor to tax on pollution, implement clear criteria for R&D support, avoiding that strong established interests dominate. Secondly, we need a wide range of green demonstration projects and pilots as a result of cooperation between research and business and financed by governmental funding. Highwind and Weeking Lady, mentioned yesterday, are not enough. Promising projects and pilots should then be ensured long-term funding for gradual commercialization to market. And thirdly, we need to internalize the economic value of the ecosystem services, which many of the new solutions are based on, and also the costs of the environmental degradation or destruction. These costs have to be demonstrated and integrated in both governmental and business decision-making. WWF Norway's challenge to Norwegian politicians is to, as fast as possible, to agree on a white paper on green economy in Norway. The white paper should be the fundament for a holistic, long-term and binding strategy for how the Norwegian economy should be restructured and transformed into a green economy. Making Norway one of the leaders in the green revolution and one of the winners of the 21st century economic competition, as Giske phrased yesterday. But in order to be a robust tool for change and not only a tiny, fancy political buzzword, the green economy concept must have some solid corner posts. WWF Norway has defined the following four corner posts for green economy in Norway. First, natural capital and ecosystem services are valued in economic sense and priced in the market context. We get an integration of economy and ecology in practice, in decision making, when doing prioritizing, when prioritize issues. Secondly, the use of all types of resources, both renewables and non-renewables, are circular-based. And energy comes from renewable resources. Thirdly, biodiversity provides resilience and resistance to suddenly made changes. That is relevant both for nature, but also for human systems and technical systems. And lastly, equitable access to natural resources and to the distribution of wealth creation. A green economy building on these four corner posts would ensure a necessary integration of economy and ecology, leveling the two components, reflecting that they are equally dependent upon each other. Thanks for your attention.